Hex. Don't laugh, it's actually useful sometimes. Okay, welcome back to another game from the Clone Forge. Today's gameplay is extra special because today we revealed the new Mystery Horde. We didn't even list it in the video name or description because we wanted to keep it that much of a secret. So, without any further stalling for time, the new theme of the Horde is... Naya Monsters. Yes, all your favorite Naya creature types like Beast, Worm, Elemental, Cat, Cat Elemental. Just a reminder for those of you new to Horde, the Horde deck plays itself, casting unlimited tokens off the top of its deck per turn, and just one non-token spell per turn. And each point of damage mills the Horde one card. Let's see if we can survive this time against a Horde deck with considerably larger tokens than 2-2 Zombies. Oh, and Big Deck if I didn't mention that yet. Each player will be adding 25 life to the group total since it's Big Deck. And with every Horde game we play, our hands shall be revealed for all to see. Let's get started. We go first, and I debate whether or not I should land Edric. Edric would allow all three of us to draw cards, but it's the only multicolored card I have in hand, so it makes more sense to land it, which I ended up doing. June, also with not many gold cards, lands Time Stop, which is amazing in this format. Oh well. Josh Not Shy on Gold Cards lands Sphinx of the Stale Wind. On our next turn, I draw Grixis Charm which I could have landed to further set up my mana base, but instead I decided to get a draw engine going by casting Looter Ill Core. June lands Mana Reflection to get Birds of Paradise out there for some acceleration. Josh does nothing at the moment. The Horde's first attack is rather innocuous with one bird token and a Roar of the Worm, which makes a 6-6 Worm. Going into combat, we debate for a while whether or not June should shoot the Worm token with Slaughter Pack. He ultimately decides not to, so that he can cast Magus of the Moat next turn. The Horde attacks and we take 9 damage. On our turn, I decide to cast a Fleshbag Marauder before the other guys have any creatures on the field to lose. I sack the Marauder and the Horde randomly sacrifices the Worm token. I attack with the looter, drawing, discarding, and also milling the blazing archon that was on top of the horde's deck. Lucky us! June plays Magus of the Moat. Okay, so a few things about playing the horde. We can either say that the moat stops all of the horde's grounders, and we basically win the game, or play that the Magus stops some of the horde's creatures. This is what we decide to do. Each turn, we decide that Magus of the Moat will randomly stop two of the Horde's ground creatures from attacking. On its turn, the Horde flashes back Roar of the Worm, making another Worm token. Then the Horde unleashes the following tokens. Elephant, Dragon, a 7-1 Elemental, a 3-1 Elemental, a Wolf, and Utvara Hellkite, which is quite deadly. Especially with haste and moat evasion, luckily June is packing Slaughter Packs, which he uses on the dragon before combat to stop it from making two more huge dragons. The Magus randomly stops the Elephant and the Worm token from attacking this turn. Josh blocks the Wolf with his My Yell the Anima and we let everything else through, taking a total of 17 damage. On our turn, June pays for the Slaughter Pact and lands Xur the Enchanter. I land Grixis Charm, turning on my red mana outlet. Cast Soul Ring and then Control Magic on the Horde's untapped Worm Token for block your next turn. I totally forget about the Magus of the Moat stopping our creatures from attacking, and I accidentally attack with Looter Ill Core, dealing the Horde 1 damage and drawing and discarding. I do this many more times, just to warn you. Josh casts Flame Tongue Kavu and kills the Flying Dragon since we can't block it. The Horde untaps, unleashes a 4-4 Beast, a 6-6 Worm, and casts a Crush of Worms, making 3 more 6-6 Worms with a flashback next turn. This turn, the Magus randomly stops 2 Worm tokens. I block a Worm with my Worm, 
Josh blocks the 7-1 Trampling Elemental with Mayel, and the Beast with his Flame Tongue. We take a total of 19 damage. Luckily for us, on this turn, June casts Hex and kills exactly six of the Horde's creatures. See, I told you it could be useful. Again, I forget that the looter can't attack, dealing one damage and drawing and discarding. I cast Mimic Vac. I leave mana up for memory lapse, and Josh leaves tribute to hunger mana up. On the Horde's upkeep, it flashes back Crush of Worms, which I memory lapse, exiling the powerful spell. Sadly, the Horde casts Bane of Progress, breaking two of my things, including the Mimic Vat, and giving it two plus one counters. Josh casts Tribute to Hunger, killing the Elemental and gaining us four life. I attack for one, draw and discard. June lands Metamai, since only he will benefit from the extra turns from the creature. Josh casts Janara, Assure of War, and pumps it once. Josh is holding both Craterhoof Behemoth and Cyclonic Rift. Keep in mind that the Rift will return both mine and June's permanents as well as the Horde's. On the Horde's turn, it unleashes a 4-4 Trampling Rhino, a 3-3 Bird, and a Minotaur. It then casts World at War. The Horde can only attack with a Bird, which it does, into Josh's Junara on the Horde's second attack phase, its creatures still can't attack. June draws three cards at the end step with Jace's Ingenuity. Josh and I attack for five damage next turn. Josh leaves mana up for Cyclonic Rift. June, wanting to get out some creatures of his own, casts Polucranos, World Eater, and also Crystal Ball. On its turn, the Horde recasts World of War and then casts another Bane of Progress, destroying June's oh-so-shiny Crystal Ball. June uses it in response. During combat, the Rhino attacks, which June blocks and kills. On our turn, Josh casts Arbor Colossus for extra support blocking Flyers, and June casts Asperia, Supreme Judge, for extra Flyer suppression. Also, for Asperia's ability, we are playing that every third creature is attacking June, so June only draws a card for each group of three creatures attacking, otherwise it might be too powerful. The Horde unleashes a 5-5 Worm, a Bird, and casts Fangrin Firstborn, which I shoot with ultimate price before combat so he doesn't get the bonus. The Minotaur and the Worm don't attack, and we block and profitably kill the other two that do. On our turn, we attack for 11, and I cast Kokosho, the Evening Star. The Horde casts a Wave of Vitriol, which blows up all of our gold lands. We search the piles for monocolored lands. Josh casts Advent of the Worm for a Worm token of his own. On our turn, I finally realize that the looter can attack, but we still attack for 16 with our actual flyers. Goldspine Worm gets shuffled back into the Horde's deck. On its turn, the Horde unleashes a Voice of Resurgence Elemental token, a Big Worm token, a Hellion, a Titanian Elemental, a Beast, and Fangren Firstborn. June Prophetic bolts it over an overloaded Cyclonic Rift from Josh so we don't get things bounced on June's and my table. June adds a card to hand from the bolt. I cast Celestial Flare, randomly selecting the Hellion. We block and kill the other attackers. June draws from the Asperia trigger. On our turn, Josh finally gives up and lands a Cyclonic Rift. Josh casts Epic Experiment for 7 and gets absolutely nothing. One of the cards he does reveal is Decree of Pain. Aw, so close. June casts Lead the Stampede and finds one creature. June casts a Johnny Steadfast and pluses it, targeting Esperia. We attack for a total of 18 damage and gain 7 life from Asperia's lifelink. 
Ivan cast Rock's War Monk. On its turn, Horde flashes back Crusher Worms on its upkeep. Horde then casts Hydra Omnivore. They attack, and I block with Rock's War Monk, gaining us 3 life, but we lose a total of 12 life from Unblocked Worms. On our turn, June Miracles into Bonfire of the Damned. So that card is just bananas. June deals 7 damage to the Horde and its guys. Doesn't seem fair. Josh attacks with Janara, getting rid of the last of the cards in the Horde's deck, with the exception of World Spine Worm. The Horde then casts World Spine Worm on its turn, and June Swords to Plowshares it. But in response to that, I cast Makeshift Mannequin, returning a duplicate to the table, and exile the worm that way instead. Hmm. Well, that's the game. We tried adding deadly spells and creatures while still trying to stick with the theme. We're always trying to make the Horde decks deadlier, only we find that cards like Humility and Moat, or even Magus of the, tend to shut the Horde down, even cards like Metamai and Asperia. We keep having to find ways around these cards so that the Horde doesn't just auto-lose. It sort of comes with the territory of the format, I guess. We find that house rules tend to make things more even. Let us know your guys' thoughts on Horde and our new Naya Monsters Horde. Alright, that is it for now. And as the old children's tale goes, Nick Knack, Paddywhack, give the dog a clone. <laughs>